Hi everyone, welcome to this month's reading. Hey Aries, this is for you guys and this is your May reading. So different format this month, we'll shuffle these cards a little bit, then cut the deck and work from the cards that turn up there. So yes Aries, lucky last. Let's see what's in store for you guys for May. Okay. I'm going to take from this lot, put these away, and we will put your first card out and see what's coming. I like this card, the Six of Pentacles. So possibly money might be on your mind. We're starting off the month with this uh, financial sort of card that pops out. I call it a positive one. It talks about balance. We see the scales here and we see this man giving to these two hands down here who look to be in a less fortunate position than he, in, than, than he is in. The card is about the cycle of giving and receiving. So sometimes we are the giver and sometimes we are the receiver. So whatever position you are in, it's a wonderful one to be in because it promotes cyclical evolution. And when that is happening, we are in the constant flow of change. And when that is happening, we know we are alive and well. So some of you will be receiving which is just as nice as giving because receiving can be a bonus, it can be an extra, it can be something above and beyond. Some of you could be receiving because you need a little bit of extra support. So you might be thinking, gosh, I just need a bit of either money or emotional support or help and I could just do with it. And yay and behold, look, there's someone in your life giving that to you. So again, it's, re it's reciprocal and it's the offer of a gift from someone who cares or um, supports you. Now this can also be a loan from a, something like a financial institution, but again, that means you've been successful in achieving it. If you are the giver, you are in a place where you feel able to give out to support others and nurture them. So that both sides of it, whichever way you look at this, are a very positive card and a great way to start your month. Let's see what's up next. The Three of Pentacles. So we've got more pentacles coming. So this again is about your career opportunities or money or how you deal with either of those. This card can symbolise three people even in a project or three people with something to do with your finances or money. Often this card will turn up if you are working where you can be acknowledged as receiving uh, praise for something you have done or the work you have put in. This can also be a time where people get their exam results that they might have been sitting for universities or colleges and it's generally a feeling of positivity. It's often um, a time where you are noted for your success or achievement or your dedication and effort that you have put into work. So there's appreciation for you around this time. The chariot. I love the chariot. He is a major arcana card. Um, you've had quite a few of these colours come through, this kind of brownie, yellowy brownie colour. So we're really down with the base chakra and um, the soul of the sacral chakra areas too. So this is all about finances and manifestation, your home and the grounding on the earth sector. The chariot is very much a duplicity card. He shows the black and white, which re reference really the spiritual essence and the physical, the yin and yang, the male and female. So again, there's a whole degree of balance going on within this card. He offers um, strength at a great level, internal strength, the victor type strength which Aries often does have a, an inner strength about them. So there's something about this for the month that you have the possibility to show your strength. This could also mean for some of you that your health, if you've had bad health, there's a positive health cycle coming, you're turning the corners there and regaining some sort of strength. It could be physical if some of you have had operations or been out of action. If it's not physical, it may be emotional strength that you're regaining. So the chariot is a powerhouse of a card. It can also represent your vehicle. If many of you drive cars, this could be something either about a new car or costs involved with your own car. And there may be unexpected situations that crop up. 
This can also be about going on a road trip, so going somewhere in a car, either for a holiday or perhaps to do with um, more specific things such as work or research or something along those lines. Um, and we see the moons, this could be the time of the new moon in May, or this could be tied up to the eclipses that happened in February that is inciting this type of energy and strength and dominion right now. Oh, beautiful. The sun. Um, the sun is one of the most revered in the deck, so it's another major arcana. It gives us our very living life on this planet. Without the sun, we couldn't exist. So when in a tarot reading, when it comes up, it's offering you all of the benevolence that a sun has to offer, such as nurture, growth, love, happiness, laughter, pleasure, feeling um, like a child as well, so feeling that happiness and lightness of being. There's a degree here too of coupling, um, romance, new romance, it can often incite uh, fun togetherness, it also has a degree of fertility, so conception can be a possibility around this time as well. The sun generally has mainly all positive um, energies that come for it and it brightens up other cards around it as well. It is a beautiful card to behold. So then we have the Seven of Swords. Not too keen on this one. In fact I think overall it is my least liked card because you can be guaranteed that when he turns up there's someone around who you need to um, not trust and it, they're stealthy and they're underhand so they're doing something that they're hiding from either you or other people around you and there's a possibility that they're trying to take something and make a run for it now this could be uh, analytical or it could be you know something literal it's physical oftentimes it's about the potentiality of something being stolen from you such as um, you know your technological information or your privacy or information about you, um, you need to be really careful when this card pops up to just double check security around you, especially modern day security. So that's things like your phones, your uh, password checks and your driver's license and stuff like that. Um, it can also indicate yourself making a few dodgy choices and thinking, mm, should I be doing this or shouldn't I? So also be careful of your own actions when this card pops up. If there's something that you think you perhaps shouldn't be doing and it could have negative ramifications down the road, the answer is don't do it. So that's that guy. And then we get the Knight of Swords. So I have a feeling um, there could be someone around and it could be an ear sign person because the sword's there and there's another sword here. And he often sort of sets things up and he, he agitates the arena and he'll be verbal and he can put out a few tense words. So he does it quickly and it's like conflagration, like the tower in the background here flaming away. So there is a, a feeling there, there's something or someone around who sets off a bit of brrr and you've got to keep your eyes out for them and... Um, maintain your own integrity values and stand firm. Use the use of that chariot that's giving you that strength and then you will still come out on top of it anyhow and it's it's just a situation but it forewarns you that there could be something around that you need to be on top of. Don't let these guys kind of, you know, run away with it. And then we get the five of um, pentacles afterwards as well and this card often has a bit of a sense of um, feeling as though you've been a little bit dejected or rejected one way or another. So there's a possibility, given it's the pentacles, this could be around the career sector. So we've gone from like feeling this accolade uh, to do with a career and success one way, to turning it around to feeling as though you then feel a bit empty or in a vacuum. So um, it can also mean for a short while, and it's always a short while with this card, your finances glitch for some reason as if they tighten up. So you've got a month where I can feel it going up then down, up and down. So it's active, but you've got a lot going on. So you have to maybe, I think, balance it a little bit with, with these things if they're going to happen. Sometimes this card can actually represent a male and female parting ways, and sometimes it can be like a romance that parts ways um, and sometimes it's the man who is left um, 
there thinking, oh gosh, how did this happen? So for some of you, and it doesn't have to just be a romance, it could be a friendship and it could also be a work-related um, relationship where there's something that, that, that goes strange or unusual and, and dissipates and heads in different directions. And I think that's got the feeling, we've seen that through the last three cards, I get the feeling there's something about a connection going on there. So this could even be someone at work who's been behaving in an odd way. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Then we get the Eight of Wands. So yeah, this is back again into full action. <laughs> so so you, your downtimes aren't much. You know, you, you're like, oh, typical Aries. Plenty of things on, on the go. Rush, rush, rush. So Eight of um, Wands often indicates new things coming in. Sometimes this is even about new offers of jobs and things. Um, it can also be new people coming in your life. Sometimes this can represent new romance coming in. And it also has the potential to represent air travel. So some of you might be planning a trip to go away and some of you might be flying somewhere. Um, it's, so it's a great card. It's a very active card, full of intent and, in, you know, like, blah, 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 hurry, get on board. <laughs> you know, we're not standing around and there's heaps going on. So yeah, we're getting that feeling in your reading. Oh wow, that's so nice. My favourite card. Uh, I love the Magician. So this is the opportunity of new beginnings. And given that it's just followed the Eight of um, Wands, which we've talked about, they were possibly new beginnings and there were more than one offer coming to you and it can be people and it can be career. Bang! In comes your Magician. So it soups it up. It makes it even more amazing, a more special offer, a more powerful time. Get on board with that Magician, guys. Don't let it walk out the door. Um, without using it. It's like being given a free bus ticket or, or something or, or a ticket to say an Adele concert and you go yeah yeah I'll probably go I'll think about it and then you don't go and you've missed the best time of your life. So um, you really have to make sure that when the magician turns up you activate it yourself because if you don't do something about it it won't be done. It's powerful, it's amazing, it's great opportunities, but you've got to activate it. Judgment, yeah, I like that after the, um, after the magician. The judgment says to us there's been something that you haven't been doing right, that hasn't served you anymore, and you needed to make a change. So I think this is confirmation that, that any thoughts you have with the magician and any changes you were contemplating will be the right ones because this judgment was saying, well, look at you, you're in a bit of a flux there. You're thinking, oh God, have I been doing the right things? Am I with the right people or the right job or the right belief systems? So this is about putting your hands up and making a statement and saying, yeah, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for this change. Bring it on because this is me. This is the new me. You hear it very much at the psychic level or the... Um, subliminal level through dreams or um, feelings, gut instinct in particular, trust those gut instincts and that's that's a very big message for you for the reading. Um, and also through things like yeah, synchronistic messages, clairvoyance, uh, psychic messages as well and also some of you may have a problem with your ears that may need attending. And there's the Five of Swords. So you've had a few of those funny argy-bargy sword energies turn up, which does tell me that there's comings and goings in the month, and some of them maybe uh, have some terse words around them, even literal, you know, like, oh, don't tell me to do that, you know, get out of my life type thing. There could even be in systems or energies like that around. This one usually means, uh, in your reading, you're the victor, so you do possibly move some people out of your life, you're, you're moving on from them, but just remember to do it with dignity and to choose the right words, because we don't really ever want to burn all our bridges in life, it is more important when we're moving on to do it with respect and to do it with dignity and to be fair and also know that sometimes you need to come backwards and you need these people back in your life at various points, so just think twice about that one. And then there's the Eight of Swords. So yeah, you, 
I said it before and I knew it was coming, you have an up and down month, you have things going on, perhaps you get a little bit worried about some of the decisions you have to make or the situations around them. And this card actually does more or less say that it's, it's like you might feel a little bit of anxiety um, or tension. There are many ways that you can deal with that with yourself. Um, tapping, EFT is a particularly powerful form of relieving tension and anxiety. So self-help systems is important for you uh, in this month at every level for positive um, reinforcement and for helping any difficult situations. Um, this one here is all about self-help and it's about taking that blindfold off and actually literally using your mind's eye and also your visual eye to see that the future is not as bad as you might panic or think or feel um, and that you have great scope for moving forward. So reduce your anxiety levels and use some more intelligence about being logical with these decisions because knowing everything that's in this reading it's quite potent change is definitely coming and more often than not we fear change because it destabilizes our current patterns but you need to just go with the flow and go yeah this is the time we're moving on and the two of pentacles so um, this tells us, to, and then I will stop there actually, this tells us that the towards the end of the reading, money can be ebbing a little bit, so toing and froing, there can be periods of up and down. It talks to us about balancing our financial cycles and making sure that we have enough money set aside. So if you're thinking of rushing out to spend a lot, perhaps it would you think twice and keep some aside in case an unexpected bill turns up or in case you need um, money to invest in something else that you hadn't thought of because this two of pentacles is a very young uh, number in the deck so it's still moving forward so yes money's on your mind but your money feels like it's going to change over the month and turn into something different you know with different new possibilities this can also sometimes represent a possible interview that um, talks about overseas or, or a different job that takes you in a different direction either physically or metaphysically to speak. So there we are Aries, yours has been a really um, interesting lot of, I think it's covering off a lot of perspectives in your month because it's dealing with seemingly some really deep specifics and then it seems to deal with almost events that might happen on a day-to-day -day thing. Um, so really interesting reading actually, I'll, and I'm an Aries, so I'll be interested to see how the, how the month pans out. So we'll put those aside and we'll see what the last card is, the numerology card. And we will pick from the fifth one down. I'll just shuffle once again. Pick from the fifth one. Healing, 66, 66, clickety-click, there's lots of lovely blue stones on the um, reading table, that is angelite, and this one here is a silica, gem silica, so 6 and 6 of course add up to 12, and 2 and 1 add up to 3, so you've got, again, you've got this lovely synchronicity of numbers, you know, 6 is divisible by 3, so they're numbers within each other, and you've got the double 6, 6, Healing, and we see that blue there, you've got the blue Merkaba and the blue background, and healing with colour blue is often about communication, and we've had so much of that in your reading. So there's something in here about um, communication that happens, or uh, is part of a journey that is propagating itself forward and into the healing mode. So um, let's see what the words have to say from the book for you. This indicates a time to focus on your healing abilities and being of service to others. By drawing this card, you are being encouraged to expand your understanding of the healing arts and the many different ways to heal. Perhaps you feel drawn to Reiki, kinesiology, physical therapy, homeopathy, acupuncture, nursing, counselling or life coaching. Whichever path you choose, it's time to set the wheels in motion. It may also indicate a need to receive body work or healing such as Reiki, kinesiology, acupuncture, cognitive behavioural therapy or herbal medicine to shift any stagnant or toxic energy. 
Your energy field, which is your aura, absorbs and stores energy from other people, electrical equipment, every illness and trauma in your surroundings and your own negative thoughts and emotions. Therefore, it is important to clear your aura regularly to elevate your health and well-being and your overall quality of life. So even the last card was like, oh, bang, jam-packed with messages there for us. So um, for any of uh, the Aries that have had physical health or emotional health issues, this is a time to really um, jump on board of those words that have been given to you and look look into something that might uh, free you up and bring back more positive energy. And for myself, it's really interesting. I'm so um, close to sort of moving into more of the healing perspective myself and doing healing work. So that was a nice kind of um, connection for me as well. So whichever angle you are moving in from whichever particular message arrived there, Good luck with your journey, Aries, and may much healing come your way. So have a wonderful May ahead. Um, get stuck in and get into that judgment card and the, um, the magician and hop on board to these new directions and the new you at every level. Thanks very much, guys. Much love. Bye -bye.